now I'm going to talk a bit more about surprising things I found after the book was finished. So when I wrote the book, I had read about 400 scientific articles, and now I've read about 2,000. So there was some really shocking new information. And I would like to say, I will answer all questions, so don't feel ignored. We can't answer everyone now. I will answer all questions in writing after the webinar. Okay, so let's jump into what's the new information. And this is the most surprising information I've ever found. First, a quick introduction. And then we'll talk about material use, waste, turtles and whales, dust, and all about these non-governmental organizations who have been busy misleading us. So who do we trust? There's been a study, and if you look at the numbers here, most people realize we can't trust everything we hear online, especially in social media. If you, you look, for, only 4% 4 of people really trust social media. 30% have some trust, and the majority of people have no trust, right? So we know, even newspapers, we don't believe anymore, right? Because many of these newspapers are for free. The journalists are not so professional, some of them, as, as they used to be. Um, they publish whatever makes them the most money. As we saw with the straw case, right? The New York Times is repeating lies and did zero effort to check it. So we know we can't trust everything we hear, but at the same time, nobody else, I've, I've spent a thousand hours, but you don't have a thousand hours to go and check the science, right? So this is normal. We know we can't trust it, but it's still where our information is coming from. That's frightening. And uh, here's an example. They did a study with four and a half million tweets. And they found out that lies are 70% more likely to be retweeted than the truth. The truth goes faster, farther, and deeper. Uh, the, the lies go faster, farther, and deeper than the truth. So the truth never catches up. I think, uh, who was that? Mark Twain said that um, the, the lie is halfway around the world before the truth has its shoes on. So this is a problem. We can't trust the information and lies are spreading faster than the truth. And that's the problem we have right now. And again, just like the last talk, you see this very small text, that's the proof. That's the studies to prove everything I'm saying. So this is the one we just talked about Federico. Um, we found they've done studies on this. So if you repeat a lie, a lot of times people believe it. Even very smart people, they believe it. Even your IQ does not protect you. So this is a problem. Um, you just lie and lie and lie. And this is where we are now. We have allowed the lies to be told. And we have sat, as Massimo was saying, and the industry and our, and our organizations, at least in America, didn't do anything. And now it's very hard for us. Okay. So here are some lies that come up every day <clears throat> when I'm on LinkedIn, on social media. Every one of these things is a lie. There will be more plastic than fish by 2050. That's a lie. Plastics cause litter. That's a lie. Plastics are less green. It's a lie. Plastics use too much fossil fuel. Plastics actually reduce fossil fuel usage and they reduce carbon dioxide. That's the truth. Plastics increase waste. We've seen that plastics are decreasing waste. There are floating islands of plastic. We know that that's a lie now, right? So these lies come again and again. And on the bottom of my homepage, plasticsparadox.com, is a list of all of these lies with the answer and the truth. So if somebody asks you these questions, you can send them there. And I should say the Italian version, Il Paradosso della Plastica, is available on my website. So you can go to plasticsparadox.com and you can download the whole book for free. So thank you to Massimo and everyone for translating it. Why, why am I giving a book away for free? Am I out of my mind? I'm giving away books for free because I want people to have good information. So credibility. We talked about credibility. Where does it come from? And there are a few things you have to think about. If you hear one story, let's say it's a page from the World Wildlife Fund. It says plastics last 400 years. And you look on the page, who wrote it? Who is this person? Are they a scientist, right? What are their qualifications? Do they have a PhD in plastics or chemistry? Are they independent? Are they writing for somebody? Or can you trust them because they're independent? Where is the evidence? If I go to the World Wildlife Fund page, I see zero evidence on that page that there's plastics last 400 years. It's complete fiction, right? And the things that they say, are they verifiable? Can you check it? That's why everything I'm saying has a reference. You can go and check it. 
And in most cases on the website, I give a link, you click on it, you go and see the life cycle analysis. Everything can be checked, everything is transparent. This is how you tell who is lying and who is telling the truth. So that's hopefully everyone here is smart enough to know who is more likely to be right. The person <laughs> with 2000 references or the person who just made it up. So here's the conclusion from the last book. I won't go through this, but this is what we learned in the last talk. Um, and this is where I'm building from with the new information. So I was reading a book. Um, I don't have it here, but it's a brilliant book. Uh, and it's called Materials and the Environment by Michael Ashby. And I turned the page and I saw this pie chart. This is all the material we use in the world, right? So, so concrete and ceramics is 84% of all material we use. Wood, 9% by weight. Metals, 6% by weight. Polymers, 1% by weight. I nearly fell off my chair. When I saw 100% of the world's attention is focused on plastics yeah. and it's 1% of materials, I couldn't believe it. In fact, I couldn't believe it so much that I went to check the number. And you can do this yourself. You can ask Siri, what's the global consumption of materials? Check it yourself after the webinar or ask Google, what's the global consumption of plastics? You divide one number by the other one, the number you get 0.4%. 0.4% of all materials that we use on a weight basis are plastics. And I know that somebody's gonna to say to me, oh, no, 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 that's on a weight basis. What is it on a volume basis? And the answer is 0.8%. Less than 1% of the materials we use on a weight or a volume basis is plastic. Okay, so we're still using a lot of material, right? But the point is, if we're, gonna, if we're worried about materials, why is everybody ignoring 99 and a half percent of the materials we use. I don't see any posts on concrete. I don't see any attention on wood no. or metals. It's insane, totally insane. If I went home and I cleaned one closet, right? I go to my house and I clean one closet and I expect the rest of the house to clean itself, right? You can't focus on 1% of a problem and expect the rest of it to clear itself up. That's, that would, that's insanity. Right. So this was a shock for me. And you see, again, here are the sources, but you can even check this with Siri. OK, so waste. How much waste do we generate? In the last talk, I said that 13 percent of household waste is plastic. About 10 percent of what goes into a landfill is plastic because other things go into a landfill. What I didn't realize when I wrote the book is that household waste is 3 percent of all waste. The rest of it is industrial waste. And that doesn't contain plastic from the information that I can find. So the total amount of waste generated from plastic is 0.3%. And that makes sense, right? Because if the total amount of material we use, plastics is 0.4%, and it makes sense that the amount of waste we produce would be sim a similar percentage, right? If we use 0.4%. So it makes sense. And I've got several sources for this information it's hard to really know about waste because everyone's not, every factory is not telling you about their waste. But I have several sources and they all agree, industrial waste is 97%, household waste is only 3%, and the total amount of plastic waste is less than 1%. So my, my point is not to distract from plastic, but my point is why are we spending billions and billions and billions of dollars? Why are whole organizations like the Ellen MacArthur Foundation only talks about plastics. Why are they ignoring 99% of the problem? You cannot solve a problem by ignoring 99% of it. That's yeah. my point. Okay, so perspective is important. So we're, everyone's so zoomed in on plastic, they have plastic under the microscope. We need to come back and look at the whole picture to get the, to get the true image. So if we look at plastic entering the ocean, they tell us it's uh, one and a half times 10 to the 12 million tons. Uh, oh, that's, that's the amount of water in the ocean. The amount of plastic going in is 8 million tons, which is a big number, right? But I can't picture 8 million tons. So what is it on a percentage basis? And we see here, it's a small percentage. So listening to things in millions of tons doesn't work for the human brain. I can't picture a million tons. Most people have never seen a million tons of something. So here we go. And then someone said to me, 
compared to the amount of um, dust and uh, dirt that comes from the rivers, how much is the plastic? So we have the numbers here, the amount of sediment entering the ocean every year from rivers, the amount of plastic entering. And the answer is the part of this dust coming into the ocean is 0.05%. I'm not saying it's a good thing. It shouldn't be there, it's pollution, but it's 0.05%. So the people who are panicking are overreacting um, because the number is much smaller than what they believe. Okay, and now let's talk about turtles. We see these turtle pictures all the time. So I went and found studies. What is killing turtles, right? This has been studied. So up to 50,000 turtles a year are killed by shrimp trawling. Fishery is up to 5,000. Collisions with boats, up to 500. Dredging, 50. Others, up to 200. Plastic, nowhere on the list. Nowhere on the list of problems for turtles. I'm not saying that there's not a single turtle that ever yeah. suffered from plastic, but I am saying if you care about turtles, these are the reasons turtles die, and this is what your focus should be, because this is, this is what makes a difference. <clears throat> so plastics are not a significant threat to turtles, and there's no evidence that there was ever a plastic straw up a turtle's nose, because there was never a scientific study, and they never analyzed the stick in the turtle's nose. That's another piece of fiction. So whales, we're hearing that whales are mm. dying from plastics. There are four studies here and the word plastic, plastic or bag did not appear even once, not one mention in any study about whales dying. Not one mention, right? The reasons whales die are entanglements in fishing gear, natural causes and vessel strikes, boats hitting them. This is why whales are dying, right? It's clear, not one mention of plastic or bag. So I'm not saying again, that it's possible that a whale has been harmed by some litter made of plastic, it's possible. Um, but if you care about whales, here are the numbers. Okay, so dust. I read a study saying that 12 metric tons of microplastic are deposited every year on the Grand Canyon. I don't know. Uh, was that a million? Maybe it was, no, 12 metric tons. Yeah, 12 metric tons deposited per year. And I thought, okay, I can't picture what that means. How big is the Grand Canyon? Let's calculate the numbers. And the answer is that microplastics are 0.03% of the dust in the air. And it's mainly polyethylene and polypropylene, which is safe. But what's the rest of the dust? What is the 99.8%? 97% of dust. Do you know what it's made of? Quartz, which causes cancer. It contains high levels of lead and cadmium, which create birth defects and serious problems. So people are focused on polyethylene and polypropylene, 0.03%, where there's no evidence of any harm. And they're ignoring 99.97% of the rest of the dust, which contains large amount of definitely toxic substances. So I'm not saying that we should again ignore the plastic, but if I had a choice to focus on 0.03% of safe plastic in a dust or a huge amount of known toxic chemicals, I know where my focus would be as a scientist, as a chemist, as a logical person. So let's look at these non-government organizations. And this is not everyone, right? Some, of course, some organizations are good but many of them are just looking for our money. And we can tell that because let's look at their advice. If we're worried about materials, we know we should look at concrete, wood and metals, but they tell us to only focus on plastics. If we're worried about waste, we should be looking at manufacturing, 97% of waste together with mining, oil and gas, but they don't want us to think about that. They want us to look only at plastic. If we're worried about turtles, we just seen what's killing turtles and whales. But they say, no, no, forget about that. Just think about plastic. Are you worried about dust? Should you be worried about quartz, which causes cancer and lead and cadmium? No, 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 no. Just worry about plastic. Mm -hmm. Energy, the worst materials in the world for the, gut, for the environment and for CO2 and energy are gold, platinum and palladium. They use vast amounts of energy, create vast amount of pollution. But no, 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 we don't care about that. We only care about plastic. 
Grocery bags. We have 25 studies saying plastic bags are greenest, but the environmental groups want us to look at paper, cotton and bioplastic as solutions. So I have not found any case where their advice was correct. They are giving us almost 100% wrong advice, scientifically proven to be wrong. It's time to stop obsessing about 0.5% of a problem because you can't solve a problem by ignoring 90% of it. And it's time for the public and the press and the politicians to act. And we have to act together, Federico and Massimo and everyone listening, because these other people, Greenpeace has $400 million. I have nothing. I'm doing this for my nothing. My budget is zero. I'm doing this in my spare time. I'm fortunate to have help from people like you, some organizations who want to spread the truth. So if you really care about this, please send the video to politicians. Please send it to CEOs. Please send it to people at supermarkets. Please send it to your schools and um, try to spread the truth because um, we, we desperately need to uh, get solid information to make smart decisions. Thank you.